All right, don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Probably one of the biggest questions I get here on the channel is, how do I shoot tethered? Or what's my tethered workflow, my tethered setup? Well, today I'm gonna answer that. How's it going everyone? Today I'm gonna create a companion photo to go along with the last one that I made and sort of a companion video to go with my last video about my new overhead flat lake camera setup that I built. It's a video from the comments section. Mainly I wanted to answer all those how do you shoot tethered questions I got in my last video. Well, I pretty much get every video. I know, I do it a little differently, so I wanna answer that but I also wanna answer some of the other questions that I get as well. So how do I shoot tethered and how do I use my tablet right there at the table? I don't know if you can see that right there, but how do I use that to trigger my camera, compose and view my images? Well, let me show you. It's really simple actually, and I never thought I could make a whole video about it, but it all starts with the camera. And I'm sure you guys know the bright orange USB cable that I have here from Tether Tools. It goes from my camera, along my overhead setup, down my stand, around this fancy drink, and finally into the back of my computer, which I have Capture One open on, and you can see the shoot going on right now. Okay, okay, real quick though, I have to admit to something. I have to get it off my chest. It's gonna be hard for some of you, Maybe grab a seat, grab a snack, take a deep breath, inhale, exhale, ready? I don't use Apple. I know, the horror, a photographer who doesn't use Apple. I went to the dark side a long time ago. I use a PC and my tablet is an Android. I get a lot of comments that say, oh, you must be using an iPad and an Apple or a Mac. That's how you're doing this whole wireless tethering thing. No, no, I, I use a PC and a tablet. Hold on, if you do use an Apple and an iPad, let me get through this next step and then I'll walk you through it. But for now, inside Capture One, I can control the camera, the exposure, check the focus, compose in live view and all of that. Really important tethering stuff and why we should all photograph tethered. But then, and I think this is the part that trips most people up is, how do I then use my tablet to wirelessly trigger my camera, view my images, my composition in live view in the other room at my shooting table? Well, it only takes one hotkey press and a click of the mouse. I always forget, there's a step that you have to do on the tablet first. Use your pen or your finger and drag down from the top of the screen. You see these little icons here, drag down again and then scroll to the right you find an icon that says second screen. Tap on that and you're good to go. But now back on our computer, we can connect wirelessly to our tablet. Use the hotkey Windows plus K and this side panel will appear. Find your tablet in this list. Here's my tab S8. Select that. Now you can choose different projection modes like duplicate, extend, and second screen only. In my workflow, I basically just use duplicate. That basically mirrors what's on my computer screen here over to my tablet. Now, if you just want Capture One only on your tablet and something else on your computer, you can choose to extend. But most importantly, tick this box that says allow mouse, keyboard, pen, and touch input from this device. That last step will not only allow you to see your computer screen on your tablet, but also control it and all the programs that you use from your PC right here from your tablet. Now up here, you can see a little connection status bar. You can keep it or press this pin icon to make it go away. Now for all of you Mac and iPad users, listen carefully. I can't show you because I don't have them, but I'll walk through it step by step. Go to your system settings, click display, then select your iPad from the list below. Select the button that says mirror or extend to. From there, you can set it up as a sidecar to move Capture One or whatever program you're using the tether to. Drag the window or hold the pointer over the green button in the top left corner of the window, then choose Move To, and you're done. I know Capture One has made an app for iOS for you 
iPad users, but I'm pretty sure they, they haven't made one for Android yet. But by running my Tether workflow this way, it allows me to control the full version of whatever program I choose to Tether to. Lightroom, DragonFrame, or you know whatever camera software I want. There's two main reasons why my workflow with my tablet as a monitor and a trigger for my camera is set up this way. One is to use it as my live view, to compose my images nice and big with full use of the tethering software. I can set grids and guides, use overlays if I want to, you know, all that great stuff. Then the second reason is to take test images during the shoot. But the reason why I say test images is really to answer a question that I got on my previous video about why I don't use a Bluetooth or a wireless remote to trigger my camera instead of me using my tablet. I mean, aren't I worried about shaking my whole rock solid system here? Well, yes and no. I mean, if I was gonna take just one image, I don't think it would really matter either way. But if I was standing over here when I triggered the camera and then say the very next shot, I was standing over here when I triggered the camera, even with a wireless remote, the shift in weight on my old wooden floors would cause the picture to be ever so slightly misaligned. This is a big no-no if I'm doing stop motions or if I'm trying to composite multiple images inside of Photoshop. In fact, you know, since I never know when I need to composite, it's kind of always a big no-no. And even when I'm on set working with a client, the types of floors that I'll have will be so unpredictable that when it comes time to make the final photo, it's like, Nobody move, nobody breathe. <laughs> I mean, that's why so many, well, that's one reason why so many professional studios will have concrete floors. So to wrap this section up and also at the same time answer a question that I got on my previous video about why I don't use a Bluetooth remote or a wireless trigger to fire off my shutter, basically is that all of the final images are made back here on the PC where it's safe or on a laptop if I'm on set. Now, the tablet really is just for the live view so I can see and build my composition and to take test images. Okay, now, so let's move on to some other questions. So I have one here from at San Susan. They write, thanks for sharing this. May I ask why the low boy instead of a C stand? Is that due to travel issues? Can't wait to see the content that you shot over the summer. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to edit it all, but she's referring to my brand new overhead camera setup that I showed you guys in my last video and my old setup, which used C-stands. I used to use C-stands a lot for pretty much everything, but low boys are just as stable and they fold up so much better. This is what it looks like when it's all folded up. So you can see that they're a lot more compact to travel with you know, a little lighter maybe, but definitely a much smaller footprint. And after a few days of shooting, you know, moving the lights around a thousand times, you're gonna want something with wheels. So there's that. Okay, AOV James says, you mentioned about tablet placement. I'm thinking Apple's Vision Pro is going to be the future and replace them. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm kind of hopeful that that's the future we're going towards. I like the whole sci-fi minority report type thing. I mean, isn't that the movie where Tom Cruise is moving his hands and stuff is moving around the screen. I mean, that's really cool and all, but wouldn't you still have to plug it into the computer and then somehow wirelessly send that to the goggles or something like that? It would be great for a program, like you said, I think in the comments down below, for a program like Dragon Frame, where you could see the overlay of the next shot and then you could live at the table move to the next spot for your stop motion. That would be great and all, but I think you would have to figure out some way to keep your head perfectly still to line up the composition. All right, another one from Brian Black one says, I'm assuming you're using an iPad for wireless tethering. See, there's that comment. I sure wish Capture One would add wireless tethering support for Android. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not on a tablet or I'm not on an iPad. I use Android too as well. And I do, I wish Capture One would provide support for Android. And that's kind of why I made that joke is because I don't use Apple and I kind of feel like the photography apps and community gives preference to iOS users. But also let me know, do you guys shoot directly to your tablet? For me, it doesn't really fit with my workflow. Kind of just skip that whole step. Just download them directly to my PC and then you know, onto my archive. And when I'm on shoots, I shoot to a laptop and I have my images backed up to multiple drives just for safety. But let me know what you guys do. Another person writes, I followed you since your hair was black. I came back after a few years 
watch this video, your hair is gray now. Thank you for your videos, we learned a lot from your videos. But well, yeah, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. <laughs> I think uh, when I first started, you know, doing YouTube seriously, I, I think my hair was still a little bit gray, but now it's, you know, more gray. It's not 100% there yet, and I don't call it gray either, I call it distinguished. All right, one last one from Paulo Barbuto. The photographer's dilemma is to have great art, culture, and marketing skills. Yeah, you're right. Um, that's the way it's always been. I mean, you have to study the camera, spend years at that, spend years studying lighting and composition and styling and all that good stuff. And at the same time, you have to be really good at business and really, really good at marketing. It kind of reminds me of this quote. I can't remember who said this, but back in my college days, I, I heard it and I've kind of always wanted to make a video about it, but here it goes, it's like this. You're either a rich photographer who doesn't care about making money, or you're a poor photographer who doesn't care about making money. So there you have it. I'll leave you with that. All right, all right. Well, that was a lot of fun answering your questions. And, and hey, if you have more questions, drop them down below. Usually I try to get to them in the comments section, but you know, if there's enough of them, I'll make a video about it. As always, if you like this video, give it a subscribe, thumbs up. I always do that. Give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Drop those questions down below and I'll answer them. But as always, I'll see you in the next one. Man, I need some more coffee.